The regional implications of Israel's brutal war on Gaza are becoming clearer with a strike on a US outpost in Jordan and an Israeli attack on Damascus. What lies ahead for West Asia? The already dire humanitarian situation in Gaza is set to get worse as many countries have cut funding for the UN Refugee Agency following Israeli allegations. Why are Gazans being further punished? This is the Daily Debrief. These are your stories for the day. And before we go any further, if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button. U.S. bases and facilities have been targets of various militias in West Asia ever since Israel began its brutal bombing of Gaza. On Sunday, an attack on an outpost in Jordan led to the death of three U.S. soldiers, the first fatality suffered by the country since October 7th. Now, the U.S. has promptly blamed Iran-backed groups and vowed retaliation, continuing what has become a trend in the region, which is full of its troops. Meanwhile, an Israeli airstrike reportedly targeted Damascus on Monday as well. We go to Abdul to understand more. Abdul, momentous developments in West Asia, the first deaths of uh, US soldiers, three soldiers being killed in Jordan, of course. Now, of course, this was, I think it would be accurate to say maybe that this was building up a number of attacks taking place. Very unpopular, the presence of US soldiers in many parts of uh, this region. But tell us about what happened first in Jordan, uh, what is known as Tower 22, and what kind of responses might be likely. Well, uh, on Sunday, uh, the Islamic resistance forces, as they are, they call themselves, which have, which basically is a part of the uh, uh, popular mobilization forces in Iraq, uh, claimed that they basically targeted several uh, U.S. bases in the region, including one uh, on Syria Jordan border. Border. So uh, the Tower 22, which you uh, basically mentioned, is uh, one of those bases which is there in Jordan, primarily with the consent of the Jordanian government, uh, apparently. Uh, and it was targeted in one of those attacks, uh, though it is not it, it, for a very long time. It was not clear where it, the attacks were really inside Jordanian border or inside uh, uh, Syria, because initially Jordan denied that the attacks have taken place inside uh, Jordan. And there is a legality, of course, involved there because the U.S. presence in Syria is illegal, is considered as an occupation. But U.S. presence in Jordan is uh, is co completely different. And therefore, if uh, 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 and that, that becomes an issue. Uh, anyway, the, this is for the first time that this uh, in this attack, uh, three U.S. soldiers were killed. Uh, as Joe Biden said in a statement uh, late on Sunday, and uh, uh, at least uh, 34 others were wounded, some of them, of course, uh, seriously. Uh, and this is, as you rightly pointed out, for the first time uh, since October 7 uh, that uh, any U.S. soldier has died, uh, though there had been numerous attacks, more than 150 attacks as per the U.S. Uh, def uh, Ministry of Defense itself uh, ha have taken place all across the region. So, yeah, uh, uh, Biden in his statement claimed that this uh, these attacks were carried out by the quote-unquote Iranian-backed militias and uh, it uh, U.S. retains the uh, uh, right to retaliate it at the time and place of its own choosing. Uh, but Iranians have denied any involvement, uh, categorically saying that the resistant forces in different parts of West Asia decide on their own uh, how to uh, uh, attack and whom to attack, and we have nothing to do. And it, it, uh, the, uh, the attack is basically a, a result of the U.S. own doing when it comes to uh, is, uh, supporting Israeli war. Uh, against Palestinians. So yeah, that that these are this is the set of developments which has happened in the last 24 hours um, uh, related to uh, the attacks on uh, Jordanian base. Yeah. Also, of course, uh, Syria striking. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Syria being struck? On the other hand, by Israel, there has been reports of an attack on Damascus also. Yeah. Uh, though the, this is uh, too early to say. But uh, as per the, you can say, this has been the tradition of Israeli uh, Israelis to kind of bomb uh, 
Syria ever since the war began in the country since 2011-12. And and this is, uh, though the number of casualties is not clear, there have been scores of people in the past who have died uh, in the Israeli attacks. Uh, Some of the Iranian uh, uh, journals who are there to support the Basar al-Assal government in the war against the extremist forces in the country have also been killed in the recent Israeli attacks. Um, So yeah, uh, this set of attack, uh, though uh, it is not yet clear whether it is linked to the attack on the Jordanian uh, uh, US base base in Jordan, but uh, yeah, this is part of the larger US and Israel uh, tactics uh, in the region to basically target uh, some of the countries which cannot retaliate in any way because of their own domestic considerations, because of their own problems, and because of the lack of the international institutional support, because of, of course, their sovereignty is being violated repeatedly. As Iran uh, also stated uh, in, 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 in one of his statements, which is issued following the attacks on the US base in Jordan. Abdul, the key question here is what lies ahead for the region? Because we see that there is an escalating pattern of attacks. Uh, like it's like we were saying, you know, the US presence in many of these countries is extremely unpopular. In Iraq, we know that the parliament has actually uh, voted against it. Uh, in Syria, it's illegal, like you said. And, uh, you know, very palpable anger against the US for its outright blatant support to Israel in its genocidal war against the people of Gaza. So, uh, are we, you know, are we seeing the possibility of this escalating over time? Well, uh, we are not very sure about how far it will go. But given the statements made by the uh, experts or the even the US president following the attack on Jordan, one, uh, of course, that they will retaliate. And that retaliation bringing in Iran explicitly would mean that anything can happen. Iran may be attacked or some of the... Uh, 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 interests which are considered to be linked to Iran may be attacked and that may provoke retaliation from uh, the forces uh, including uh, Iran because uh, there has been uh, incidents of Iranians uh, uh, kind of retaliating US provocations uh, in the past as well and so if that happens of course this is going to be uh, a a complete uh, uh, chaos in the region this may lead to further escalation because the war in Gaza is already escalated at the regional level uh, since the U.S. has decided with the U.K. to attack Houthis, uh, Houthi bases in Yemen. They have carried out more than a dozen dozen of strikes inside Yemen, uh, including uh, one on Sunday, sorry, on Saturday. Then uh, they have been carrying out quote-unquote retaliatory attacks inside Iraq, uh, Iraq, Iraqi government has cautioned about it that the re- U.S. is reta- uh, repeatedly violating its sovereignty in the name of uh, kind of attacking, attacking the quote-unquote Iran-based militias. Uh, uh, some of the members of the semi-official uh, uh, popular mobilization forces have also been killed in those attacks. So uh, if and then the... Uh, then Israel, as I, uh, we already saw what happened in Damascus, Israel has never shied away from attacking Lebanon, violating the Lebanese sovereignty and or violating the sovereign Assyrian uh, sovereignty. So those attacks have been carried out. Israel ha- is considered to be as to have bases, uh, of course, not directly, but secret agencies have bases in some parts of Iraq. So uh, that the war in Gaza has basically acquired a regional dimension for a very long time now. But uh, whether it will intensify or not, it depends how U.S. reacts to uh, what it claims to be uh, Iran-backed attacks on its base in Jordan. And if that happens, then, uh, of course, there is no limit uh, uh, to which the war can extend to. We should only hope that U.S., uh, uh, but, of course, that hope uh, make that being hopeful about U.S. taking a rational stand and kind of uh, trying to find out a a better uh, uh, way out of this uh, conflict in uh, Palestine, in Gaza, uh, uh, is the only hope. If that is not taken, of course, uh, the war is going to escalate uh, regionally even further, going to intensify regionally further 
in the near future. Right. Uh, do uh, stay back, Abdul. We'll come back to you for the next story. Shortly after the International Court of Justice delivered its historic verdict, Israel swung into action, not by seizing its bombing and murder of Palestinians, but by accusing the UN Agency for Palestinian Refugees of involvement in the Hamas attack on October 7th. This was based on an allegation that a few members of UNRWA were involved in this operation. Now, the allegations were quickly picked up by a host of countries led by the US, which announced that they would no longer contribute financially to UNRWA. This puts the entire population of Gaza at further risk. To find out what happened and why, we go back to Abdul. Abdul, welcome back. A very uh, brutal decision, it seems, from uh, West, all these Western countries. But could you first take us through what happened? What are the kind of allegations that Israel is making that prompted these countries to sort of so quickly uh, cut aid uh, without you know, any kind of proof or evidence or anything? Well, uh, Israel has claimed that some of the uh, members who are working with uh, United Nations Relief and Work Agency, the UNRWA, and the uh, Refugee Agency, which basically is responsible for taking care of uh, almost more than millions of refugees, basically, all across the uh, all across Palestine and in the region, uh, uh, were involved in the October 7 attacks. They have been involved. Some the the, the details of it was apparently published by the New York Times again, uh, uh, without any evidence. Of course, there has no evidence been provided. All of this is based on the claims made by Israel and uh, allegedly claiming that uh, they have carried out an investigation and found out that these people were involved. And on the basis of these allegations, uh, a large number of countries, including the US, have basically cut the funding, uh, uh, basically suspended for the for a while the funding of UNRWA and apparently this is half of the funding uh, which UNRWA receives particularly at a time when uh, it needs more money it no, needs more financial and other kind of support to because given the extent of displacement caused by uh, Israeli bombing since October 7 inside the inside Gaza most of its shelters are overcrowded inside Gaza it's, it has been forced to convert it's the schools into shelters and so on and so forth. So given the fact that it, at a time when it needs more international backing, most of the countries, of course, only on the allegation made by Israelis have decided to withdraw their funding. And most of these countries are, of course, uh, US and its European allies. Um, uh, and the, uh, the sad part is they are the primary funders. Uh, most, more than half of the UNRWA funding comes from that. Uh, so yeah. That is the situation. More and more countries, by the way, are announcing. Uh, in fact, uh, in last 24 hours, four, four more countries uh, have, most of them Europeans, have announced uh, 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 that they are suspending the funding of UNRWA. It seems that this is an attempt to kind of politically uh, uh, dismantle the mandate of UNRWA and uh, kind of add into the Israeli campaign of Disp displacing Palestinians make them desperate to move out from the uh, uh, from Gaza uh, because one the humanitarian aid uh, carried out by UNRWA is uh, affected. Uh, there will be very less hope uh, at this moment because other aid, uh, despite the UN resolution, despite the ICJ verdict, is not filtering in. In fact, I Israel has. Uh, imposed much more uh, restrictions on the movement of aid inside Gaza in the last 24 hours. So uh, it seems that this is a larger political uh, plot uh, uh, carried out by Israel in support of its Western allies, pri primarily the US, to cut the funding. So yeah, that is uh, uh, the situation. Uh, of course, UNRWA has denied all, all those allegations. Uh, but since there is a pressure, of course, there may be uh, investigation, uh, at least uh, for the uh, uh, for the kind of because of the uh, need to kind of convince some of the countries to uh, start restart the funding. And Abdul, also, uh, could you maybe take us through what is the humanitarian situation right now, uh, especially if this kind of funding is uh, you know being stopped? I believe UNRWA has said that it will be difficult to carry on after February if this is what the situation that prevails. Exactly. Uh, that, As I was saying before, uh, because UNRWA is the primary uh, aid giver, in particularly in Gaza at this moment, when the war is at its, uh, for last four, more than four uh, months, is going on, 
and uh, uh, almost 1.8 1.9 million uh, palestinians are displaced majority of them are living with in the camps which are run by unrwa and uh, as i said before most of these camps are overcrowded there is no uh, water facilities there is no in not enough food there is not enough medicine most of the people are forced to live in the open uh, uh, in open air and uh, and are surviving on the basic uh, facilities basic amenities provided by uh, unrwa in particular of course there are other agencies working but mostly unrwa uh, so if the funding is affected and i i i am not sure whether unwa will be able to survive till february also if this drastic level of funding reduction happens and and that would mean that the the humanitarian situation which is already in a very bad situation uh, there are every day we have already talked about how hunger is uh, um, affecting majority of the palestinians uh, there is a danger that most of the palestinian kids will not have enough food and will be stunted for life because there is not enough nutrition food available hospitals are attacked uh, there is not enough medical facilities hence there are uh, diseases which are completely uh, curable are acquiring a uh, epidemic uh, 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 scale and all of this is primarily because there is not enough uh, humanitarian aid coming inside gaza uh, as i said before despite uh, the un security council resolution despite the international uh, 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 court of justice verdict that no aid should be provided and despite the claims made by us itself that they are working for greater uh, uh, availability of humanitarian aid none of these are working they are all uh, uh, rhetoric at this moment and over and above the funding of the agency which is doing some work on the ground is also affected it would mean a complete disastrous uh, disaster for the majority of palestinians in gaza and it will be uh, adding into the genocidal act as we were talking about of israel in particular because that will force majority of the palestinians to of course take des- desperate measures and 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 that is completely unacceptable uh but yeah this is what is the situation at the moment the very bleak picture uh, we'll come back to you soon in a couple of days with late mode for more details and that's all we have in today's daily debrief we'll be back with a fresh episode tomorrow in the meanwhile do visit our website and follow us on all the social media platforms